Welcome back. Thank you for joining us in, in, in Insights into Northeast Michigan. I'm here with Lisa M. Dietlin from Lisa M. Dietlin and Associates. And we're discussing, um, you know, from what, before the break, excuse me, I'm stuttering here, um, what to do at this time of year with your money, which organizations to give to. It's, it's tough. You don't know where you're giving sometimes. It is very tough, Anna. There are over 1.5 million nonprofit organizations registered in this country, wow. and that's more than doubled in the last 10 years. Wow. Um, you just see a proliferation of nonprofit organizations being created every year. And it is tough because if you want to give to, for instance, cancer research, or you want to give to cancer awareness or cancer treatment, those might be three different organizations. And you as the donor might think they're all in one organization and your dollars might not be going exactly where you want them to go. Right. Um, during the break, we were discussing, for instance, you know, how do celebrities choose with all of their money? You know, who decides in, in which organizations are legit? Well, it's, it's hard, um, and that's why we were approached, because they kept saying to me, we get asked all the time, Lisa, we get asked for to sign a guitar, to perform a concert at a benefit, we get asked for autographed CDs, so how do we decide? And what we take them through is what we call an individual philanthropic audit, where we sit down and we do an assessment of what they're currently doing, we talk to them about what they're passionate about, we ask them what they value, and then we come up with a strategy. So I always say, if you really care about cats and dogs, why are you the spokesperson for Save the Whales? I mean, it's right. not that Save the Whales is a bad organization, but if this is what you really care about, then maybe you ought to move some of your philanthropic dollars over here and some of your philanthropic activities. And everyone says to me, especially those that are high-profile individuals, but everything's a worthy cause. And I say, absolutely, but you need to decide. Do you want to lift people up or do you want to eradicate something? For instance, lifting people up would be scholarships. It would be arts and cultural organization, books. We talked about that at the break. You know, right. library books for kids or just free books for kids. Eradicating is you want to get a, rid of diseases. Do you want to get rid of hunger? Hunger is a huge problem this right. time of year and huge in our country. Both are good. Ne neither one's bad. Neither one's perfect. But you have to pick and choose because most of us don't have all the financial resources in the world exactly. to give to everybody that asks us for charitable dollars. Right. You know, for instance, sh today is one of, you know, shopping weekend, um, and you're going to see people, you know, ringing bells. You're going to see people that are homeless, people that need food, people that need toys. Mm -hmm. How does the everyday person who's shopping decipher? Well, the, the good news is that um, in the United States, we are the most charitable country in the world. There was $295 billion, that's what the Vienna given away last year, and 85% of it came from individuals, people like you and me. You know, corporations and foundations get a lot of credit, um, but it's really individuals like us that are writing those $25 checks, those $50 checks, buying that game to ensure that that child has something under the tree to right. open. You decide by, you have to look in your heart, and it, it, it's, it's simple, yet it takes a little bit of time. You have to look in your heart and see what you really care about. I also advise that you do an assessment of what you did last year. Where did you give your charitable dollars last year? Did you get any feedback? Did you hear how the dollars were spent? Does the organization only contact you when they need money? And hold that organization accountable. Call them, you know, let your fingers do the walking on the right. internet. What did they do with the money that you gave them? I also recommend that you have no more than three charitable causes. Now that usually is beyond your house of worship and your alma mater. Most of us give to our church or our house of worship or we give to our school. Now it might right. not be our school, it might be our kids school, the school our parents went to, it might be something different. But beyond that, most of us can't afford to be, and afford meaning both in time and financial resources, to be involved in more than three other organizations. So really think about it. At this time of year, we hear a lot about needs of children and families, right. so that might be one. We hear a lot about the needs of senior citizens at this time of year, that might be another. And then you might have something you care about. We live in this great area. You know, me being born here, I consider myself still living here, but with the Great Lakes and Thunder Bay, you might say the environment's my number, m number three. Lighthouses are big around here. Absolutely. Absolutely, that might be a cause. You know, restoration, historic preservation, that might be something. Um, you might have had a disease in your family. So every year, I have a friend who her father died of cancer, and the first Saturday of every month, she throws a party and gets all of us to come, and there's right. items donated, and she raises money for the American Cancer Society because of her father dying from cancer three years ago. So 
you know, you pick and you choose, and it's individualized. I wish there was a magic button that you could add water and say, here's your three charitable causes. You right. Know, the other thing, Anna, is they're going to change as you grow older. You know, as we um, go through life, things become less important to us and other things become more important to us. And it's okay to change your mind. It's okay to say, you know what, I gave to this organization for five years, but now I'm going to give over here. You just have to think about the cause of the day today is the environment. Fifteen years ago was AIDS and HIV. Right. doesn't mean AIDS and I HIV went that. away. Yeah. Um, and it doesn't mean the environment wasn't there. They were both there at the same time. It's just today, it's the environment. And it's I Katrina. It's, you know, different hurricanes and different tornadoes mm -hmm. that are hitting places and devastating lives. And, and the next two that I predict that are coming on the horizon um, is financial literacy with the subprime mortgage and the financial problems that so many individuals are facing, credit card debt. I think that you're going to see a huge... Um, creation of nonprofit organizations trying to educate the public about financial literacy. And the next is our baby boomers aging and the needs of the senior citizens. Right. Which will be interesting mm -hmm. because of all the assisted living facilities going up and the need to spend more there. Absolutely. And transformational philanthropy, which is our tagline, is about doing really good philanthropy that transforms both the giver and the receiver. When you wrote a, a check and um, you don't know where that money goes to, you don't feel very transformed and you might not even think or consider, did something really happen with right. those dollars? I was on a plane with an individual, happened to be going somewhere, and this man sat beside me and he informed me that after 9-11, he wrote a $25,000 check to one of the big three funds that were raising dollars, and he's never received any information about that $25,000. About where it's gone. And where it's gone, who it's helped. He never even got a thank you note. Now, a shame on that organization, and I understand we were overwhelmed after 9-11. Those of us in the charitable world, the outpouring was so unbelievably large that we didn't know what to do. We didn't have right. systems in place. But I often say, if we had only, even five years later, wrote him a note and said, uh, thank you for your gift of 25000 It took us seven years to get to you, but Right, you. exactly. You know, that person would be amazed that you still remembered. And so transformational philanthropy to me is really being purposeful about your charitable dollars. Okay. And... Um, you know, any closing remarks well. on your visit in Alpena <laughs> in our last minute here? No, it's been fun to be back, but I I, I, um, I love the snow, but I don't miss it that much that right. we got uh, on Thanksgiving Day. But what I would say to the folks who are listening, I would ask them to think about what do they really care about and realize that they do have an opportunity to also get a tax deduction if they make their gift by December 31st at 11.59 p.m. And if you're sending in a check, I'm not going to the office and dropping it off, make sure that the check and the envelope are postmarked December 31st by 11.59 p.m. just before midnight. And if you're using a credit card to make a donation, make sure that that's posted at the same time. And if you're going to make a gift of securities and stocks, we recommend that you um, allow at least a week for the processing. Um, charity can be a really fun thing to do, and especially if you involve your whole family. And right. um, if you're wondering where to begin, my advice would be think about the children who wake up on Christmas morning if they celebrate Christmas and might not have something under the tree for them. And think about the families that might not have enough to eat. There are wonderful food bank organizations and agencies and pantries that feed hungry people, and it's a 52 week a year problem, not right. just at, during the holidays. Um, but really think about making a charitable contribution this holiday season. Right, and all, and all great tips. So thank you so much Thanks for, for, for stopping in and for sharing your field of expertise with us. Thank you, Anna. Yep. And we hope you enjoyed the program, and we will go ahead and see you next Sunday on Insights into Northeast Michigan. Thank you for joining me.